Hello and welcome to Ask the Pastor on KCMI Radio 97.1. Um, I'm here with some worship leaders and pastors as we're talking about worship. We kind of piggybacked off of Unite Night of Worship, and that's why our lead and senior pastors have asked us to um, fill a month or so here of Ask the Pastor here on Wednesday mornings and on Facebook on Mondays. <laughs> and we've just we talked about Unite Night of Worship, and we. Uh, our last session, we, we talked a little bit more about the philosophy and what is worship. And today we're talking a little bit more about worship in the Old Testament and how that um, creates an image of what worship is today. So I should start out by saying I'm Pastor Ken Bear from Mitchell Berean Church. I'm Cody Peterson from Westway Christian Church. And I'm Antonio Cortez from The Rock Church. Awesome. So I think we can look at creation as God just creating something that would satisfy him and fulfill him and would worship him just in its, its existence. But there's, and he looked at everything and said, it is good. And then he created man um, to have a personal relationship with, to have this choice to worship him. Um, everything else is good in and of, of itself. And man needs to make this choice. Um, and we see the fall. Uh, we see man now destined to hell and the sin nature um, overcomes man and and destines him for an eternity apart from God when we were created to worship and be in unity with him. And then we see Abraham brought about. We see the um, the covenant that was made there. And we see Moses come along. We see the the style of worship this uh how god wants to be approached in worship and it's all symbolism of what's going to happen in the future so uh, um israel the delivered out of egypt there's the ark of the covenant that was created um, where the holy spirit would come reside and interact with humanity um, and he would descend he would lead them um, just kind of setting the stage here for uh, how that creates imagery for us today so we want to talk a little bit about the tabernacle and a little bit about how that um, sets the stage for us in the New, the New Testament and how Christ fulfilled it and where do we fit into that now. So, um, Cody, you're preaching on this quite a bit here coming up. It's something I'm passionate about, but I've talked a lot here already, so I'll turn the table over to you. Yeah, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. And I think like you said it right at the beginning, like right after creation, um, when God created man, like that there was this need for relationship from the very beginning. And um, I actually get to talk about this this Sunday. Awesome. And so um, I'll just kind of give a little overview and then you guys can interject and jump in if you have anything that you want <laughs> want to hit on. So um, like start at the very beginning and there, there are kind of two aspects of this relationship. There's this relationship that, that God desires for us to have with him personally. And so you get Adam in the garden and um, he has that personal relationship with God. And God would say, it says that he walked in the garden with them, with Adam and Eve, and he, they conversed in the garden. And then we see evidence of that throughout um, Abraham talking one-on-one -on -one with God and that mm -hmm. covenant relationship that's established with Abraham. And then um, fast forward through after the, the Israelites are taken from Egypt, um, God establishes the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the Ark of the Covenant. was It was God's desire for his presence to be able to dwell with his people. And if you read through um, Leviticus and Deuteronomy and where it talks about the kind of when the, the, uh, the tabernacle was created uh, and established, um, the tent, uh, the, the tabernacle sat right in the middle of the camp. And so all of God's people were mm -hmm. around the tabernacle. And then in the Holy of Holies within the tabernacle sat the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God's presence dwelled among his people. And so we have that aspect of God's really desiring that relationship mm -hmm. with his people. And I think you could take it one step further to that. And not only did God desire a relationship like that personal relationship with his people, but he also created within us that need for relationship with each other as well. And so if you rewind back to the garden, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so what did he do? He created a helper Eve. And there was that that relationship where mm -hmm. it was not just one on one with God, but then they were able to have a relationship with each other. Yeah, it's and, good to point out because yeah. worship is very relational. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's something we see in the New Testament where worship would become just these actions that they carry out and not a relationship with God. 
and you see that within the tabernacle too um that sat in the in the center of their camp mm-hmm. and that was kind of the the hub for um all the things that that God had set in place. Everything was designed out. Like you have to make this out of this specific material. And this is where it's going to sit within the, the courts, the inner courts, the outer courts. And, and who is qualified to enter and when that happens, yeah. not just anybody could walk in. Um, you even had to be a Jew just to get in the outer courts yeah. of the tabernacle. Um, and then you have to have varying levels of um, priesthood to mm-hmm. get into the deeper levels um, with where, where the ark is. So, I mean, you see elements of community within the tabernacle too. Um, the outer courts was a place where you said you have to have some sort of, some access to be able to get into right. it. Got to be an Israelite to but get in the outer courts. You're all sitting there, um, maybe waiting in line in the elements to, to get your sacrifice approved. Um, there was definitely some, some things where it had to be like very specific that God wanted and without going into a ton of detail, but... Um, you're there with the people that are all there, like corporately together for the mm-hmm. same purpose of um, relationship with God and making sacrifice and offering those things to Him. So, yeah, um, the sacrifice we talked about that in in Romans 12. You know, what is the sacrifice? And it's this temporary um, symbolism of mm-hmm. uh, of what Christ is going to do as He sacrifices Himself, but a temporary covering for sin and so yeah as we approach the tabernacle we got to be a believer to enter the courts mm-hmm. right we got to right. be in the fold um it's so our symbolism for today is man you got to be in christ and you got to be in him in order to be a part of the body and the fellowship to be able to worship god and and then we first approach um the wash basin right mm-hmm. and we got to get clean um, and we can't do that ourselves. The Word of God is going to wash us and clean us. So as we come into worship, um, New Testament style, we got to wash ourselves in the very uh, same way. Um, but the, the Word of God is known as being um, that which washes us clean. And then we come to the altar. Mm-hmm. I love <clears throat> the fellowship and, like you said, to be united as one in the body of Christ to come together. Um, we're, we're talking about worship, and I know we're kind of coming off the unite night of worship and why we do this. But, you know, when we come together, that's when we truly can um, unite our voices and combine as one body and worship him. And I think it's just it, it's amazing how we, we can't do this life alone. We need fellowship. And that's why, God, sure. like you said, God created a helper and, and we have brothers and sisters in Christ to help join us into that and raise us in our beliefs and and help us walk through that and our need for one another exactly yeah. yeah 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 i think like making that bridge between the old testament and the new testament there are so many things that when you look at the tabernacle um like jesus fulfilled that you mentioned the altar where the sacrifices were lifted up yeah. and even um, when it's made out of yeah the bronze yeah. signifying justice mm-hmm. and justice is met there with the blood of the lamb or the bird or whatever yeah. was brought, um, depending on their financial state, and Christ's blood satisfied it all. Mm-hmm. That's why don't we worship that way now? Why don't we mm-hmm. um, have exclusions on people? And um, why don't why don't we have an altar sitting out right. um, it, in our lobby? And we bring our lambs in. I mean, we got plenty around in this agriculture <laughs> and, and ranching area. You know, um, why don't we bring in lambs? And boy, what up! What a messy way to worship, but this is what, how God was satisfied. Yeah, and Jesus fulfilled that, and that he was the, the sacrificial lamb for us. And I think it's it's in Jude that it says the once for all, mm-hmm. um, that Jesus was that sacrifice. There's no need to bring things to an altar for us now yes. because Jesus was that sacrifice. And, and it's intriguing to see that. In, in this progression of the, temp, the tabernacle, we've come and joined the fellowship. We've washed by the cleansing of the Word of God. Um, so are we doing that in our personal lives? Um, are we trusting in the blood of Jesus at the altar um, and claiming His blood over our sin? So we're confessing our sin. Um, in, that, uh, in that imagery, you see the person laying their hand on that uh, goat, um, that animal, and transferring the sin over symbolically um, to that animal. And then the animal um, 
is then killed um, and the blood co- satisfies God's wrath against sin. Um, but that has to happen before we get into this intimacy, yeah. which is what comes next. Yeah, and then you get, the, the closer you get into the, the tabernacle, like that's just one step closer into the, the presence of God. And so you see things um, like the table of showbread and the lampstand and, and incense and all of those things have different representations, um, remembering what God had done for, for the Israelites when mm-hmm. you took them out of Egypt and the unleavened bread aspect of the table of showbread. And, and come eat with me. Yeah, come eat come with me. Come sit at the yeah. table. Come join me in fellowship. And then eventually you get to the ark and the, the holy of holies, and there was one person that could go in there, and that was the, yeah. the high priest. And, and once a year. Once a year, and they would tie a rope and put bells around his, <laughs> his garments, and if uh, if he didn't do something right to God's prescriptions, mm-hmm. then he could he, be struck dead. And, then and they could pull him out. Pull him out, yeah. <laughs> and the bells would stop ringing. But yeah. the, the thing I love about that is, I mean, when you look at the Gospels and see Jesus hanging on the cross right after he um, died, it says the, the veil in the temple was torn from top to A bottom. A massive oh, veil, yeah. And like Providing access exactly, yeah. to everybody. And now, and you see it in Hebrews and elsewhere in Scripture, um, it's not limited to just these isolated high priests because each one of us are called priests. Yeah, with Jesus, as and in Hebrews it says, Jesus he is the, high, the priest. high priest. And so he was the one that, that gives us access to God. And through his sacrifice and the, the veil of the temple that separated the Holy of Holies from the other places, that was torn in two, signifying that access to God is through Jesus. And, right. And we have that today. And then... Um, How so? What is what is the temple? What is the tabernacle? Yeah, we are. It yeah. says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and um, God sends the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Within us. And so we don't have to go to the temple. We don't have to go to the tabernacle, but God gives us access to him through Jesus' sacrifice and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that it's it's what we're talking about through this aspect of what is worship like it's continual it's a lifestyle and it's because of what jesus did for us and god sending the holy spirit to us that we have access 24 7 to him um, through worship i'm just so glad i live in the post jesus yeah. era in the era of the church um dude I'd, I'd probably pass out every time my animal got killed or something yeah. <laughs> that's, that's messy but yeah it starts out so broad you're in the in the camps and you come into this uh this courts um, with praise you're washed by the word of God you confess your sins um, you come into the inner court and it's dark it's quiet you've got the smoke of the incense um, the bustle around you is blocked out by these thick curtains um, and and it's intimate it's quiet and so worship isn't uh, it's something that happens in our heart like you were talking about in one of the previous sessions Antonio um, it's what's driving us. It's not just carrying out the external motions. And the reason why I bring that up is because we see when Jesus comes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had completely lost the point of everything they were doing. Um, they were going through all the motions. They were carrying out all the religious aspects of everything. They were, they were taking part in worship as far as what God told them to do. But the relationship wasn't there. Um, so I'm so glad you brought up relationship because that is what it's all about, um, a relationship with God. And so apart from God, everything that we do is completely devoid of meaning. Um, and worship isn't worship if God's not the center of it, if there isn't a relationship. And so we can say it's about God just like the Pharisees and Sadducees did. But if we're not truly in relationship with him, um, it's empty. It's worthless. That's good. That's good. I'm enjoying this. Me too, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to get into the next sessions. Um, we'll be talking about how we choose worship sets and maybe how each of us got into ministry. Um, so please join us for some future sessions of Ask the Pastor here on KCMI Hope Radio 97.1. Blessings. Have a wonderful day.